Alright, please, that's really an amazing move. Hello everyone, today we're last game, and I'm going to show you guys a really cool chess game that was played in 1864. This game was played between Paul Morphy and Captain Valley, and it is one of Paul Morphy's major masterpieces, although most people have probably never even heard about it. Now in this position, we can already see that white is much better, black's knight on e4 is misplaced, and now after bishop out to d5, the knight comes under attack, and how does black save that knight? What can black do? What, what happens if black were to play the knight out to c3, for example? Go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to look at this, and see how white should respond. So after black plays knight out to c3, white can simply take that knight, after bishop takes back, play bishop takes f7. And if the king were to take back, then queen out to b3 comes with check and picks the bishop back up. In this position, white would simply be up by a pawn and would also have a very nice devastating attack against the black king, because white is up in development and has more central space. Now, if we look at the other variation, we can see that instead of king it takes f7, what about just king out to f8? Well then bishop out to g5, it hits the queen, and the queen cannot move, the knight has to drop back to defend it. Then queen out here to b3 hits the bishop, and looks to defend this bishop on f7, and continue the attack. So after bishop takes down a1, we can see that white has like a 5c exchange, but even though white has like a 5c exchange, white has a huge massive pawn center, and also has more development than black has. White has 4 pieces developed, actually 5 pieces developed, and black only has 1. In addition, black's king is not able to castle, and the rook on h8 is going to have a very difficult time getting into the game, so white's attack would continue here because he has lots and lots of pluses in this position and black would have a very difficult time defending against this. In the actual game, Captain Vela does not play knight out to c3, but instead he plays bishop out here to c3, which hits the rook, and if white takes the knight, then black will simply win the exchange. And so this is really cool, because Paul Murphy does end up sacrificing the exchange in order to have a huge attack. Now, what would have happened if white had simply played knight takes c3? Is that possible as well? Go ahead and pause the video, take a moment to look at this, and see if you can figure out what white should do after black takes back on, on c3. After Captain Veli plays his knight takes c3, white simply plays bishop takes f7 and attacks the king. Knight to d5, check, queen out to f3, and we have a threat of checkmating one move and also a threat of taking the knight. So black has to defend with queen out to e7, and then white can simply take the knight. Now the material is equal, but black has lost the right to castle, and white will have the initiative and a very nice attack here. The bishop c3 we saw that knight takes was possible, but in the actual game, Parmofi decides to sacrifice the exchange. And this is also leads to a very nice devastating attack, bishop out to g5. The knight would either have to drop back or the pawn would have to move out to f6. In the actual game, Captaveli plays uh, pawn out to f6, but what would happen if Captaveli had played knight out to e7? Go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to look at this and see what you would have done as why. So white plays knight out to a3 because if white is able to capture this bishop, then he will be winning. Now, if we look at the material count, this is because we can trade off these two minor pieces for these two minor pieces. We can see that these two minor pieces are equal to a rook, and this rook equals that rook. So at this point, black is simply up by a minor piece, but the bishop here on a1. But if white were to capture that, then white would be completely winning because two minor pieces are much better than the rook, especially in the end game. So therefore, if black would have played the bishop out here to b2 to try, to try and save it, the knight out to c4, bishop out here to c3 is the only move, queen out to b3, and the bishop is trapped and has no safe squares to go to. White would win the game and have a devastating attack against black's king. White has more development and a very nice center, plus it has this really nice pin on the knight, so black can hardly move. Now, if the bishop were to move out here to c3 instead, though, then why would simply play queen out to b3? The only square for the bishop is here on a5. Now, if the knight out to c4 hits the bishop once again, if it moves, then why would simply play bishop out here to d5? The knight can't take it because it's pinned to the queen. As of that castle, then we see knight out here to d6. Now, at this point, there is a lot of pressure on f7, and it cannot be defended by the queen. At the same time, it, uh, black is going to have a very hard time developing his pieces. The bishop and his rook cannot get into the game, white's attack is going to continue. So if black were to simply take that knight, then white could take back, and at the moment, white is down even more material. But looking to capture here on e7 to hit the queen, hit the rook, hitting f7, and uh, the knight can hardly move. So black is just going to be completely losing here. Yeah, if black would play a move like, I don't know, like maybe like a5, then white could simply take back and hit the queen and the rook and win a lot of material. If black moves the queen, then white can simply take back and win a lot of material that way as well. So the game continues with f6, and then after pawn takes back, pawn takes back. Bishop takes here on c6, looking to open up some lines to get the rook into the game. Rook check. King out here to f7, and then white plays this really amazing move. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find what white's next move is. White plays this really incredible move, and congratulations if you saw it, White plays knight out here to e5. Now the knight cannot be captured because then the queen will be hanging. So the king moves out here to g7, and then White plays another stunning move. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find it. 
This is a really awesome chess move, and congratulations if you solved the right move here. It's, it's bishop to h6 check. Now the king has only two squares to go to. It can either take the bishop or it can move out here to g8. If the king moves out to g8, then simply queen out here to b3 check. If the bishop looks to interfere, then queen takes bishop. It's a checkmate. And if the queen interferes instead, then queen out here to g3 is also a checkmate. After bishop here to g4, and queen takes. This is pretty awesome. So in the actual game, the veal goes ahead and plays king takes here bishop on h6 and that's going to promote that variation and then we have knight here at the f7 check hits the queen hits the king after the king moves the right can simply take the queen win the material and then the attack continues go ahead and pause the video and see if you can come up with what's next best move so Paul Morphy continues the attack with queen knight here to h5 and looks to threaten rook out to e7 followed by checkmate therefore black plays rook out to d7 to stop that but is interfering with the development of his bishop at the same time. Now white plays knight out to d2 and black has to choose either to get his pieces into the game as fast as possible or to save the bishop on a1 and black decides that it is much better to get as many pieces into the game as possible and moves the rook over to get, to get the bishop into the game. But white simply recaptures the material and we can see that white's attack is continuing and is incredibly strong here. Knight takes here on f6 looking to doesn't checkmate here on h7. Black can take on g2 at the moment because it comes with check but then the rook has to drop back to defend h7 and now white's attack is going to continue. See if you can find what white's next move is. So white plays a really nice move. Rook out here to e8 and black must trade it off then white that comes with check. The bishop has to drop back. If the rook out drops back then the knight can simply attack the rook. At this point white continues the attack with h4 and there's very little that black can do because his pieces are very much tied up. a6 is played but then queen out here to f8, h5 and then we have knight takes on g8. Now what would happen if black were to play rook takes g8? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find what white's next move would be. So if black were to recapture the knight on g8, then white can simply play queen out here to h6. This is a checkmate. Congratulations if you saw this move. That is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and look at what happened in the actual game. Black does not take the knight with the rook instead of the king out here to h7. Knight check. He moves to h6 and knight out to e8. After king moves out here to g6, white has a checkmate and two moves. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find this checkmate. Well, congratulations if you saw this checkmate. This is pretty cool. So right here, white simply plays queen out here the f6 check. The king has only one square to move it to. King h7. Then queen takes on g7 as checkmate. This is how Paul Murphy won the game. Well, thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see you next time.